Hello, goddesses. Welcome to Minnow Labs Live. We all love travel, but it can get in the way of our healthy lifestyle sometimes. From waking up early to get to the airport or starting your road trip early to trying to find healthy options to eat at the airport, at the gas station, or sometimes fast food restaurants. It all comes down to prepping. So we are going to talk with Dr. Maggie today about how we can prepare our minds and our bodies for summer vacation so that it doesn't affect our digestion. So as always, this session should not be considered medical advice and is being provided for information purposes only. It is not intended to substitute professional medical advice, diagnosis, or treatment. Please consult with your healthcare provider should you have any questions or concerns. I'm going to welcome in our brand partner, Dr. Maggie, and it's gonna be a bit of a delay because of Instagram. So I'd love it if you guys would share where you're watching from or ask any questions around this topic, digestion, travel, eating healthy on the go, staying active, anything that you have questions about, as well as perimenopause or menopause, we always cover those topics. So please do include those questions if you have any. So right now I'm going to invite her in and there's gonna be a bit of a delay. So just excuse me for a second. Is she in here? Oh, perfect. Hi, Dr. Maggie, how are Hi. you? Hi, hello, hello, how are you, Natasha? Good. how are you? I'm good. Good. I'm adjusting the lighting a little bit. Oh, little you look perfect. You oh, look perfect. you're so sweet. Ah, hi, My everybody. name is Natasha, and I am a community manager for Minnow Labs. This is our amazing Dr. Maggie. She's our brand par partner and a naturopathic doctor. Dr. Maggie, what are you drinking today? Oh, I have like three beverages in front of me, but um, <laughs> I have some green tea. I have a glass of water. That's always the way to do it. I have a I green have drink. water today. <laughs> I love that you have three options. I usually start with two, so I do something similar during the morning time. I'm so excited about our promotion today, everyone. We are going to offer everyone 20% off two or more items that they put in their cart at minnowlabs.com until Friday at midnight using the code digestion20. And I'm excited because we are offering a gift with purchase. Now, these are so delicious. They are by Menowell. This one is my favorite. It's the double chocolate brownie. I take it with me on all of my vacations. I love, love, love them. And we've had Julie, I think you remember Dr. Maggie, Julie on as a guest. So you can go and watch the replay on uh, YouTube and you'll be able to learn more about this product. So it's going to be included in your order that you place until Friday. So really excited about that. I don't know about you guys, but when I start preparing for a trip, I'm looking at all of the yummy places I'm going to eat, but in the back of my mind, I'm also thinking about healthy options, making sure it's aligned with what I'm eating on a daily basis. I'm looking at all the places we're going to explore, the sites we're gonna see, but I'm also thinking about the steps I'm going to get in on these trips. I've never stopped to think about my digestion or how to prepare my body for this adventure that's gonna like kind of change up my routine. So if you're like me, this show is for you. And today, Dr. Maggie is going to provide some tips and tricks for how you can kind of enjoy your trip from the inside out. The best thing I would say is really stay hydrated. Definitely. Make sure you're moving your body. So walking, staying hydrated, taking your probiotic, taking magnesium, all of that can be helpful. Definitely. How much fiber do women need a day? And how much fiber would you say that women actually consume a day? That's a good question. So we usually need around like 25, 35 grams of fiber daily. And most women are getting like 10 to 15 grams. We as a nation, as uh, international, even just not getting enough fiber in our diet. And most of our anything that we're eating that's processed is really devoid of any fiber. So the more processed foods we're eating, the lack of fiber we're getting. Or if we're even just long fasting windows, you know, oftentimes in that day, we might not be getting enough fiber. So we have to, I think most women do need to be intentional about getting fiber in their diet. That's why it can be helpful to have a supplement to carry with you when you're traveling as, you know, like fiber, because you might not be able to eat enough fiber in a day when you're out and about enjoying, you know, your vacation. Sometimes we overlook what we're eating. So that could be yes. something that could help. Yep. A fiber is great. A probiotic is great. All of that is good. And then just really being intentional about trying to get some greens in. Definitely. 
a salad in each meal, I mean, right? And that would help. That's a nice addition. <laughs> Do you have any hacks for women to eat the right foods when they are on vacation or out with friends to dinner? Okay, well, I, I, I do have hacks and I will go in them, but I do like to just emphasize, I do want women to have a sense of freedom, right? And joy when it comes to eating and not feel bogged down by rules, especially when they're on vacation. Definitely. So just kind of, that's a process to get to that point, but I want everyone to sort of be on that journey of having this sense of freedom when, and knowing they can order whatever they want, but being more guided by how they want to feel feel like do they really want this do they want to feel that way no but no rule so that's my overarching philosophy but as far as like specific hacks start a meal with your with salads with greens because you're getting that fiber in which can really help buffer any blood sugar spikes from that whatever you eat next which can help you just feel better and also kind of keep blood sugar stable so starting your meals with greens is a big one um, usually for breakfast, if you can and want, I'm choosing more protein and veggies rather than like the pancakes and waffles <laughs> can set your day up for success. Yeah, I love that. Good. And then, um, have you heard of the glucose goddess? Yes, yes, she's, I love she's, her. If you guys haven't, she's on Instagram. She does a ton of hacks. Um, she talks about having a savory breakfast again, rather than sweet. The other thing she mentions um, is drinking a little vinegar, which I think has helped some of my patients too when, I, when they report back. A tablespoon of vinegar and a glass of water can help curb blood sugar spikes after a meal. That's something you can do when you travel too, yeah. right? Keep it in your hotel room. You don't need, you know, just a, have a little bit with water um, before meals. And then the other thing that can be, you can be intentional or be mindful of to help with, um, keeping just blood sugar stable while traveling. If you do squats or lift weights before a meal, you actually push out those um, glucose receptors to absorb it more efficiently. So there's less of a blood sugar spike. And taking a walk after dinner, which is like such a lovely thing to add to a vacation, right? You have a little bit more time and freedom. Walking after dinner can also help lower that blood sugar spike. And when blood sugar is less spiky, you, your metab metabolic health is supported, your energy is supported, your brain health is supported, and you have your longer, you feel full longer rather than crashing and wanting more sugar or something more sweet. So those are all things you can do while traveling. I love all those tips. One of them, I've not tried the ACV yet to do that before a meal. I love that. I want to try it. They do have little bottles that would be fun to take with you on a trip. So that's something else that's a little bit of a hack that you can use. And then I was following somebody on Instagram who was doing the squats when they brush their teeth. So it's something to kind of add into your routine while you're on vacation or even at home that, like you said, could be very beneficial. So you could do it no matter when you're, you know, what you're doing on your schedule for that day. It can so be those little cool. things, right? Yeah. That can actually like and make it have a big difference. Yeah. I love that. Um, how can our gut health affect our sleep? That's a good one. So, well, our bio, the gut microbes, our biodiversity of our gut ha can influence circadian rhythm. That, there are studies to support that. It's amazing just how much the gut health plays a role in really every aspect of our life. So having a healthy gut microbiome, biodiversity can influence the circadian rhythm. Plus a lot of serotonin, like 70% of our serotonin is actually produced in the gut. And this is something, so serotonin, we often think of as our happy hormone, right? Like the um, SSRIs, they, they help increase serotonin in the body so we feel happier. But also this is one thing that does it, we, we don't know a lot or a lot, of, we've been talked a lot about it, but serotonin gets converted into melatonin, which is a hormone that helps with our sleep as you know we yeah. know. Um, so yeah, so anything that supports gut health, that supports healthy serotonin production can also um, help with sleep. Definitely. So get those probiotics ready for your trip. <laughs> what should women avoid consuming while they travel? Honestly, I don't like to have rules like that. I yeah. want women, like I said, that food freedom, you don't have to avoid anything unless you're somewhere where you like can't drink the water, then definitely avoid that because I've had a lot of people get very sick. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that's the only thing I would say. And I love, love that perspective because I don't do carbs, I don't do sugars and all of that. But when I travel, I don't over consume them, but I do like to share with my family and try things because I don't want to feel like I've left out and been left out on trying something new. And so I love that you think it's in a fruit freedom, enjoy it and then see how your body reacts. So sharing is caring is how I always go with it. So I can still enjoy yeah. it. <laughs> Definitely.
Should women drink more water when they travel? We've been talking about this a lot already, but what are the benefits and how much more should they be drinking? We should definitely drink more water first. We tend just not to drink as much when we're traveling yeah. already. Plus we get more dehydrated when we're traveling, especially with like plane travel. Yeah. So, I mean, you know, definitely aim, you know, it's average around two liters a day is what we need. Some people need more, but typically if you're on a long flight, aim to get a glass of water every hour, like yeah. eight ounces every hour to stay hydrated. And even adding some electrolytes to your water can be really helpful. I mean, because travel, long plane trips can cause, because of dehydration, can lead to like fatigue and headaches, even brain fog. So, I mean, it's not too hard just being, but you just have to be mindful. We all just need to be mindful, intentional with these actions, but they can lead to big changes. Yeah. I think it's smart to get a water bottle, not to load everybody up in their tote bags when they're traveling, but a water bottle could be really helpful yeah. for us. You go in with an empty water bottle because you can't bring in fluids, <laughs> right? But then there's those, I mean, I have, you know, then there's, there's the, um, you know, the fill stations yeah, yeah. all over. So I love what it. I, I always come in ready. Yep. <laughs> Does it work to start the day off with coffee if you want to make yourself go? Is that good for your body to do this? I know some people like rely on that cup of coffee to get them going to go to the restroom, actually. <laughs> I mean, here's the, I, I don't have an issue with someone enjoying a cup of coffee in the morning, yes. but I don't think we should have to have coffee to have a bowel movement. Like, I don't think that's optimal. Yeah. But what I will say is this, um, if that's what all you need to do to have a good bowel movement and you're good and you're not dealing with any other gut issues, then it's fine, it's fine. <laughs> but ultimately, yes, we don't wanna have to depend on any external variable to have a bowel movement right? besides water. I, mean, I was going to say, we discussed this, but starting the day with, what is it, how, is it eight ounces of warm water? I say start your day, yeah, thank you for bringing this up. 16 but, ounces oh, of 16. water before your coffee. Yeah. And out of all, and I do, you know, I do a lot of different treatment options and recommendations, and I would have to say that is the most consistent feedback I get is like, hey, Dr. Maggie, adding in that 16 ounces of water in the morning was a real game changer. I feel more energetic. Yeah. throughout the day. I feel so much better doing that. And it's such a simple thing we can all do. Oh, oh, sorry, my allergies are acting crazy. I have to be honest really quick. My eyes are going crazy. Oh, no. Sorry, everyone. <laughs> ah. um, let's go through a round of traveling, but I can still, if I can still see. Um, how can someone stay active while they're on vacation? Yes, this is a great one. I'd make it joyful, make it yes. fun. Think about how you can be active and have fun at the same time on vacation. So it's, it really just takes a little bit of thinking and planning, but you know, exploring a new neighborhood on foot, renting a bike, maybe trying something new like surfing or kayaking. And it looks like you're crying. Am I bringing you I to know. tears? It's like I'm having such a beautiful conversation with you that it's making me cry. <laughs> I'm so sorry. But yeah, make it fun. Like I think, you know, if the gym is your thing, you know, you can totally look for that. But I think just trying to do something joyful, fun that is active. Yeah. And again, that might just take a little bit of creativity, a little thinking, but yeah, as simple as walking someplace instead of driving or walking, instead of taking a driving tour of something, you know, a walking tour. But yeah, most places you can, you can, you can, you can, hotels or wherever you're visiting, you can plan a hike or explore on foot or rent something like a bike or kayak. I love, love excursions like that. I don't know why my eyes just decided to do that. Perimetopause, who knows? Um, what <laughs> snacks would you pack for a road trip? Okay, so the options or you know things that can keep you regular. I don't know. Nuts, seeds. Yes. You can make your own little trail mix of a combination. You can bring some of the higher quality jerkies, like turkey jerky or beef jerky. Um, they now have like veggies to go. So Trader Joe's, you know, has the artichoke hearts and the olives. That's easy to pack. Um, and then Poshi Snacks, P-O-S-H-I, also has a lot of veggie snack packs that are good to, tra to travel with. I love that one. I need to look up that last one. Um, don't forget your supplements when you're traveling. What are the benefits of probiotics when you're traveling? We've talked about this a couple of times, but what can be some of the benefits that women can think of when they take this as a... Uh, something they travel or they pack for. Yeah, I usually do recommend, hey, just bring your probiotic with you because, you I mean, our gut microbiome can change, right, with travel, but also with every meal we eat. So if we're eating differently, you know, just adding in that probiotic can help support gut health and gut microbiome and even regularity. We also know it gives a little bit of immune support too yeah. as we travel. So yes, 
I, I just think it's like an easy thing to bring that is a little bit almost like an insurance um, in case anything you eat disrupts the gut microbiome. Yeah, you're ready, armed and ready. Um, you can get stressed if you haven't gone for a few days. How can you calm yourself down so you can keep enjoying your trip and not crying like I am? <laughs> I just self-compassion. I mean, know that, you know, your trip is so temporary in the grand scheme of things and trusting your body and knowing it will get back into balance. I mean, just to not get to the stress of not going can almost make things worse. So as much as possible, you know, to have the hacks that we've talked about that can help you go. I know I, this is like, I should be a Ted talker, right? Like I'm just <laughs> moving you to tears. I'm so sorry, Natasha. <laughs> I don't know what my eyes are doing. Please excuse me. Um, I'm okay. I'm just having allergies for some reason all of a sudden. Uh, it's so now I lost my oh, yeah, just, 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 you know, Yes. Things can get disrupted. Yes. If we can do our best to not get too emotionally worked up about it, I, I just think it's important because the stress of not going can make things worse. But knowing you have your hacks, knowing your schedule will get back is really important. We've talked about this before. For, but how many days can a person go without going? Because oh I thought gosh. that, you know, like every day is what we're, op you know, we're trying to do. But could people go for a while without going? I mean, I would and it's I say that's a healthy, yes, you can go. You're not going to die, you know, like if you go yeah. <laughs> days without going. It's like, how does it make you feel? I feel like we hear these rules of you should have a bowel movement after every meal or I, it, I think it's a little individualized, personal. You should feel good. Like you shouldn't. People can go every day even and not feel complete. And I know there's women here that agree, like can understand that, right? You go every day, it doesn't feel complete. You don't feel good after. That's an element of constipation. Like you should feel good and complete. And some people go every other day and it's kind of okay for them. Yeah. So you should just kind of feel done. You should feel good, but you can go. I mean, I have some people when they travel say it's been like six days. Oh, I mean, I, I feel so bad. I mean, that's that you feel pretty crappy when yeah. you go that long without having a bowel movement, for sure, Probably. but it happens. It definitely throws it off, for sure. I mean, personal experience here. I'm like, I travel yeah. a lot. <laughs> I'm always having issues with it. Mm. Finally, what should women do to detox their body when they return from a getaway? And is it necessary? I mean, see how you feel. I tend, if I'm indulging more, I just, and what I will recommend to my patients, I think this is doable and most people kind of crave this, is just give up the, stop the alcohol, mm -hmm. sugar, and ultra processed foods. Even doing that for like five days, 10 days. I mean, that is a nice reset. Yeah, definitely. Well, I'm gonna look and see. I saw questions coming up. I think my eyes are drum getting better. Let's see, can it be 16 ounces of iced tea to start the day or is it pure water that's better? And this is from Simply Vicky. Thank you so much for this question. That's a good question. Yeah, no ice tea because that's like the caffeine that's not as hydrating so it needs to be water or water with electrolytes or water with lemon that's fine but not the iced tea doesn't count as hydration i suppose if it's like an herbal tea like um like mint in a in water yeah that's probably fine but like stick with the water stick with the lemon water stick with electrolytes in water or like a green superfood in water one of those okay. not us not something that has caffeine in okay. it okay um, hi, what can I do? I gain and lose weight. I'm inflamed and I'm in menopause. Thank you, XOXO Beauty Vegas. We got to get the hormones in check, you know, figure out what's going on hormonally, support that and decrease the inflammation and support the gut microbiome. So yes, like eating an anti-inflammatory diet is really important. Prior to making sure you're sleeping well at night is really important and then the hormone piece can really cause um issues with metabolic health and some weight gain as estrogen declines so you know looking at it through the hormonal lens as well can be really helpful but the gut health and, and decreasing inflammation and and sometimes we need to adjust what we're eating too yeah just another question I, I just thought of since I'm not sure if you guys have any more questions, please share them in the comments below. We have Dr. Maggie here still for another couple of minutes. But I know we've talked about this before when we travel during perimenopause. Um, something to keep in mind is the periods since we're not, you know, our periods are off and on during this time from seven to 10 years. And you could have a flash period, you could have a surprise period. Um, and sometimes 
flying or maybe being in the, the plane, not the plane, the car for too long can also trigger this. So do you have any tips and tricks for this kind of experience, the periods during travel? I'm just always come prepared is what I say. Like, it, just expect your period could come at any time yeah. with any flow intensity. You just have to be ready for it. <laughs> yeah. I had someone wear white and was, you know, pants and just like totally got their period unexpected on a flight. So um, just preparing, you know, whether that's a change of, un you, you can feel, if you're prepared, it makes it less traumatizing for that's sure. So just packing a change of underwear, maybe a change of hands and whatever tampon pad, menstrual cup, just always carry it with you. Because during perimenopause, our brains are so sensitive to just any change of routine, flying, you know, any, any we are just more sensitive. So yeah. it can just throw off our cycle pretty easily. And we just, being prepared is, is important. Yeah, a plug here too, I just thought of what she was saying that is wearing period panties on a flight or a road trip. That way, if it does happen, you're not like, you know, gonna be having too many issues and you can just have a change of panties with, you know, all the other stuff that you need. Um, someone said that happened to me and was frantically looking for something while on vacay in Greece, it was awful. So yeah, you should always come prepared because like we, during perimenopause, we just don't know when it could start again. Like yes. we just, and so to think that people we're not educating our women i'm so glad we're doing this right yeah, like yeah. just it's like a simple little thing we should all do when we travel because you don't want to be in greece with a period and, and not and have you can't find it yeah yeah and not all top pads are created equal so you don't going to find exactly what you're looking for when you're traveling yes. yeah. depending yeah. on where you're going totally so that's something to keep in mind as well um, that was my last menstruation too. Oh my gosh. Oh, what a way it ended with the bang. <laughs> I know. You're like, well, this is it. Yeah. <laughs> well, unforgettable. Thank you for sharing that. What was that? It was unforgettable. Like you'll, you'll never forget the last one. <laughs> Seriously. Well, if there are no more questions, I just want to close out by reminding everyone, oh, stocking up on period panties now. Yes, seriously. <laughs> Make sure on top of the, oh my gosh. So I want to just let everybody know about our promo today that we are going to have until Friday at midnight, you'll get 20% off any two or more items in your cart at minnowlabs.com. And that is going to be until Friday at minute, midnight using the promo code, if I could speak, digestion20. And you're going to get one of these amazing bars with your order. They're so delicious, so great for travel, no matter if you're in perimenopause, menopause, anything. They're just delicious with maca protein and fiber. So they've got you ready and covered. Um, but I want to make sure you know about that minnowlabs.com until Friday. If we have any questions that weren't answered, please feel free to email our customer care at customer care at minnowlabs.com. Dr. Maggie, I'd love to thank you again for joining us. And before I close out, I'd love for you guys to answer a question. What will you make sure you're traveling with this summer? Uh, I saw somebody share period panties, so I think that's gonna be on there, but please share what you're gonna be carrying with you. As always, this session should not be considered medical advice is being provided for information purposes only. It is not intended to substitute professional medical advice, diagnosis, or treatment. Please consult with your healthcare provider if you have any questions or concerns. We're so grateful for you guys joining us here today. Please be ready for July. We have two shows we're so excited about, and we'll talk to you next time. Enjoy your summer. Bye. Bye, everybody. Bye.